They've been on Earth for more than 200 million years, and they can live for over a hundred years. Turtles are unique animals, and not so many people know about them. But today, the species are endangered, and they are facing threats from many fronts. When they hatch, they use one another as a ladder to crawl up to the surface. On this episode of Wildlife Warriors, join me as I meet Fikiri Kiponda and follow him on his quest to save these mysterious creatures, one turtle at a time. This is the coastal town of Watamu, and I'm here to learn more about the beautiful animal that has always fascinated me. For me, the most interesting way to see a turtle is in its natural habitat, but they're extremely hard to find. These animals have survived since the days of the dinosaurs, but now they are among the most critically endangered species on Earth. Five of the world's seven species of turtles are found here in Kenya. Most people who visit the coast never see what's below the surface, but once you go, it's another world. There is so much beauty down here, but the chance of finding a turtle is very slim. This isn't what I was expecting. Something is seriously wrong. amazing. We saw the turtle. It has horrible, horrible, huge tumours on its face. Its eyes are completely concealed. It looks like it's completely blind. No, I don't even understand how it's even feeding, how it's still alive.
but there is one man here who might be able to help. Fakiri Kiponda has saved over a thousand turtles. He works in the turtle hospital at the local ocean trust. Hi Fakiri, morning. I'm good, thanks. Sorry to bother you so early in the morning. Ah, oh, I've just been out uh, in the marine park uh, with the KWS Rangers and we saw something that I wanted to show you because I'm hoping that you can help us. Um, let me just show you these photos, hold on. Um, can you see this turtle? She looks like, I think it's a female, I don't know if it's a green or which kind of a turtle, but it looks really unwell. Can you see that? Oh, it's a green turtle. But can it's you see what's happening on her face? Well, she's so sick with the tumors yeah. grown all over her eyes, so she's probably be blind. Tumors all over her arms, her armpits, her fins. I, I would say there's no flippers. life left for this poor turtle. You can't help her? We can't bring her here? Mm, not really, because this disease is very contagious. Oh. And because they have affected the eyes, this turtle will eventually gonna die. There's no point she's going to survive. Oh, that's awful. Yeah. I feel devastated. It's too late for this turtle. Fakiri told me that she's suffering from an incurable disease. She's already dying. So, but what's happening here? I see you have other, other patients around here. We do have patients around here. We have... Um, oh, wow, a baby. A baby green turtle. What happened with this one? Well, she was brought in mm -hmm. to the show because she was exhausted. And one of the rangers from Kerapolis picked her up and caught us. And we went for her rescue. Now, we brought her here. We placed her in fresh water so she cannot get more dehydrated and she looks so fine. She's settling at the bottom of the tank. That means she's not a floater. So we're planning to release her sooner than later. The Local Ocean Trust was started in 1997 when local community members in Botamu decided it was time to take action to protect sea turtles under threat. Fikiri has been working with them since 2009. But he wasn't always destined for a career in conservation. I'm an accountant by profession. I studied accounting. That was my thing. But when I was a little boy, my father used to work around Watamu as a chef in one of the hotels in Watamu. So we used to come to Watamu on holidays. So one evening I had a walk on the beach and I bumped on these small creatures which were racing down to the ocean for their life. I didn't know what they were because I don't have any fishing background. So when I saw these turtles, the small babies, I was so excited, so obsessed, and I had to get to understand what type of animals they were. That's where my interest with turtles started. Here at the turtle hospital, this is a, <laughs> like a ward. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it is. And um, tell me about how many patients you get into the hospital and how do you treat them? What kind of problems do you we encounter? Get sick turtle like one in a week like uh, at the moment we have uh, 38 patients that will be admitted this year wow and that's amazing that roughly will be like one patient a week and they come here with different problems some of them come here with like normal injuries from maybe shark bites maybe from boat propellers injuries oh, wow. we get some coming in here with the fibropapillomatosis so Which that's the problem that that turtle has. Yeah. yeah. And it's all because of the pollution that we put in the sea. The rubbish that is thrown into the ocean affects turtles various ways, like the soft plastics. When they're dumped in the ocean, they look like jellyfish, which turtles end up confusing with their natural food. They end up swallowing that. And of course, plastic cannot be digested, so they end up getting some blockages. And that's not all. There are even more dangers out there threatening their survival.
I'm on a night patrol with Carlos and Newton from the local ocean conservation organization. Light pollution is one of the main threats to turtles, which can be easily disoriented by white light. And that's why we're going to be using only red lights as we go down the beach to look for the turtles. Look at the crab, whoa! Oh, oh, they're everywhere. Can you see them? These ghost crabs make it very hazardous for baby turtles to make it down to the water. And it's part of the reason why only one in a thousand hatchlings actually makes it to adulthood. The ghost crabs might look small, but they're big enough and strong enough to snip off the head of a baby turtle. This is the greatest threat to the baby turtles. There are millions of them all across the beach and they will wait around the turtles' nests. They'll smell them as soon as the hatchlings start to come out of the nest and they will gather around the area that the nestlings are trying to make it down to the beach and they'll just race after them. After walking most of the night, we found the tracks of a green turtle. This is amazing. I've never seen anything like this before. It's incredible. So this green turtle has finished laying her eggs and she's now covering up the nest. We've been able to measure her. She's huge. She's probably laid about 130 eggs down there. And she's in a deep sleep. She's not even aware that we're standing here. The reason why the covering of the eggs is so important is because the gender of turtles is determined by temperature. Females develop at a warmer temperature, above 29 degrees centigrade. The males at a cooler temperature. And that means the center of the nest is where most of the females are. And the males are those eggs around the outer edge. The next day, we went back to the beach to see if any other nests had hatched. Apparently, we have a nest up here, okay. which hatched a couple of days ago. This nest is somewhere around here. Right. So we need to dig out, get all the remains, and see how successful the nest was. To monitor how successful turtle breeding has been on these beaches, Fikiri and his team excavate the nests and count how many eggs have actually hatched. Fikiri and I have been excavating this nest. He's doing all the hard work. I'm just counting the eggshells. And there's still more coming out of this nest. The most amazing thing about turtles is their mysteries, some of their secrets that we still don't understand. Hatchlings from this nest 
have gone out to sea and they will not be seen again on this beach for about 25 years. It's extraordinary that an animal, the day it's born, leaves its home and yet knows where to come back 25 years later when it's ready to lay its own eggs on this very same beach. These are the mysteries that scientists like Fikiri are trying to solve. Turtles can live up to 80 years, but only one in a thousand ever makes it to adulthood. So what's happening in here? Uh, this is an information board. We have all stuff, like these are the, some of the threats that are facing turtles, like plastic, we have pollution, we have coastal developments. So these are the kind of things that the turtles are, are swallowing? Swallowing, yeah. 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 And then we have poaching, and then we have fishing, like Ili. Will you excuse me, Paola? Sure, sure. Wow, these are the f nets that the turtles get. Fish. And just like that, Fikiri gets a call telling him of a turtle that needs rescuing. We're just heading out to rescue a turtle. Fikiri got a call that a, a turtle has been captured in a net of a local fisherman. Every day, Fakiri gets several calls like this. So, what do we need to bring? Uh, bring the, the box underneath your seat and I grab oh. the towel and the how about it? With the mouth. Safi. Oh wow, yeah. there it is. Another green. Another green. What do we have in here? Just give it a one and cover, please. Oh, poor thing. Okay. Yeah, let's get started. So what are we going to do? We need to get the measurements. Uh, I'm happy to do that. Do the writing then. Uh, okay, you'll do the writing? Yeah. Okay. What do I need to measure? You measure the carapace length as from where the shell meets the, uh, the flesh mm -hmm. from the neck and then straight along the spine. To the inner and then just shove me the reading. 42.5? So basically we do that three times. Three times? Yep. Okay. 42? Yeah. Even? Yep. And okay. then another one is 42. 42. Perfect. Okay, now let's do the width. Okay. So we do it from the sixth marginal skew. So this is the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. And then you run the tape across to the other okay. end on the sixth. 40.8? 41? 41. 40.8. 40.8, perfect. So what is he telling you about himself? Yeah, he was telling me about what time the turtle was caught. The dead obviously was caught today. <coughs> and What time was it caught? Nine. The turtle looks new, like we haven't had, you know, by catching this program before, because she doesn't go attack. So what we need to do, we need to get her weight, and then after that, we'll do the tagging, and we'll be ready to rescue, because she looks healthy, not injured at all. Mm -hmm. So she looks ready. No, she's in a good shape, yeah. No bruises. 
As part of the local ocean trust's catch and release program, Fikiri will take all the turtle's measurements and then tag its flipper. This turtle is 9.48 kilograms young, small, um, juvenile green turtle in very, very good condition. Tagging of turtles help in the sense that most of the turtles that we get will have been already tagged. So with that, we take all the data with the turtle, like the measurements and the weight. It will give us a clue about the growth threat of that turtle. The same turtle could have been caught at a certain place, and the next time she's caught, she's caught another place. So in that sense, with the tag, you can at least trace the migration pattern to that turtle. So wherever the, the turtle swims, and it's caught in another place, then they know that turtle was tagged by Watamu Turtle Watch. It has, at the back, has our email address, info at watamuturtles.com, then local ocean trust, and then we have the box number. Has anybody ever called you to say they've received a yes, turtle with a tag? Yes, it happens. Not quite a lot, but it does happen. Which turtle have you ever received which came from the furthest place? Well, the one that I know came from South Africa. It was tagged in South Africa as a, a nesting female, and then it was caught here as a bycatch. So that means, basically, that's her nesting area, that's her nautal beach. When Fikiri goes to these villages, he always draws a crowd of kids. He uses this opportunity to talk to the children about turtles and encourages them to help in their protection. Lift her up and put her to the oh. Nice. This little turtle has just been brought into the turtle ambulance designed specifically to bring these turtles from places like this in the villages and take them down to the coast where they can be released back into the sea. She's in the equivalent of a turtle bed and she can't get out of this. She's actually sleeping now. Uh, the sooner we go, the better, because it, the day is really heating up. So she seems to be climbing out already. Yeah, she's okay? so excited. She smell the ocean. She can smell and, the ocean. Yeah, and can hear the waves. So she's so excited ready to go. So okay. Oh my. Just get your hand across, hold on the other end of the shoulder, uh -huh. and on the other arm, just hold at the back. Okay. She's so excited and she'll start flapping as we're heading down to the ocean. So be careful, don't drop her. Um, so that like arm this. just goes straight under. I can feel her breathing. She's so soft underneath on her armpit. All right. Yep. She's a lovely turtle. Yeah. She's so gentle. So my favorite, the green turtle. Why are they your favorite? Well, how they look. I mean, it's not like the hawksbill with the skills kind of like overlapping. That strange look. I don't like it. She's getting very excited. She knows she can smell the sea. She can hear it. I just pace her towards the sea? Yeah, just at the edge of the Just world. at the edge here, yeah. she's gonna go. Okay. There you are. Perfect. Whoa. <laughs> that must feel so wonderful yeah. for her.
if you want to help our amazing wildlife, why don't you start a Wildlife Warriors Club in your school? To learn more about this program, please visit our website. Thank you.